Right now, let's bring you our exciting new series on the River Nile. The Nile is the world's longest river and bears special significance for the millions who live on its shores and depend on its waters in at least five African countries that it flows through. Our team is on the ground in Aswan with comprehensive coverage on this river's importance. Here is CCTV's Penina Karibe. Penina, where are you now and what do you have in store for us today? Oh, thanks, Mahia. I'm in Aswan. We are live here. Of course, this is our second day of a continuing special coverage of, of the Nile. And I can tell you, Mahia, we've got a pretty interesting show for you, at least for the next uh, 15 minutes coming up. We are following this mighty river, the longest in the world, which cuts across four major African cities, right from Jinja in Uganda to Juba in South Sudan, Khartoum in Sudan, all the way up to Cairo here in Egypt. And like I mentioned, Mahia, we're moving along with this river right from here in Aswan, which is the Nile's entry point into Egypt, all the way up to the Mediterranean Sea where it pours. It's pretty hot here in Aswan, I can tell you that. I'm joined by my colleague Mohammed from the Egyptian State Television. How are you doing, Mohammed? I'm doing fine, Penina. How are you doing? I'm great, despite the temperatures, of course. Well, it's not that hot, guys, but maybe Penina is a little bit, you know, sensitive. Anyway, <laughs> you know, girls, Anyway, it, we're still in magical Aswan. As you could see at the background, this is magic. You can see some activities at the background there. There are some tourists moving around on the uh, mountain. We have some plants and we have boats sailing across the Nile. It's fabulous in here. It is fabulous. And I don't know if the camera can show you, Mohammed, but you can see just what looks like ruins where we saw the tourists taking pictures. This is the Elephantine Islands. And just beyond that, we've got what looks like a mosque. That is the Aga Khan Mausoleum. That is where Aga Khan III, Sir Sultan Mohammed Shah, was buried in 1957. It's one of the tourist attraction sites here in Aswan. Exactly. And now we'll go to uh, the Temple of Komombo. Komombo was dedicated to Sabek and Horus. There is a very interesting Egyptian legend about Isis, Osiris, uh, Horus, and the vicious Uncle Set. You should check it. You know, Komombo was called in old Egypt Nut, meaning city of gold. Komombo now is an agricultural area with lots of activities concerning agriculture. Yasser Hakim has more to tell. The Nile is not just life for Egypt, but it's also the source of goodness. That's why most of the temples in Egypt are built on the riverside, because the desert represents evil. Now, this temple we're at, Komombo Temple, is a special one, because it's one of the rare temples that represent two gods, one on the right here and one on the left. On the left side, you will see a picture of a crocodile all over the temple from this side. But it's not just an ordinary crocodile, it's a god. Sabek, the god of the Nile, the god of the military, and the god of, naturally enough, crocodiles. He surfaced as a deity around 3,000 years ago and was celebrated as a protector with an insatiable libido. Some pharaohs even modeled themselves on him. Sobek had a wide following across Egypt. Thousands of crocodiles were taken from the Nile, worshipped as living incarnations, and then mummified. Muhammad Ibrahim from the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities is an expert on Komombo. The ancient Egyptian people who were travelers, who were sailors, who stopped their ships close to the temple of Komombo here to go down or to go inside this temple to represent for this god offerings, yes, to approach to this god to keep their journey safe. As you go farther inside the temple, you reach the exclusive chambers. And now we're at the holiest of the holy chamber. And it's called this way because this is where the king, his allies, and the clerics and advisors used to stay here for worshipping. 
No citizen was allowed to go inside this chamber, only the king's advisors. And here is a rock where the statue of the god Sobek used to stand, and the king and his advisors would worship him every day. Sobek, like the other gods of the ancients, is no longer worshipped. The Nile in flood has actually destroyed much of this temple. But the legend of Sobek lives on, a testament of the strong ties between the river and the deepest held traditions and beliefs of its people. just how significant the Nile was in ancient Egyptian religion. Mohammed, I, I, I know that the Nile was considered, you know, in the pharaonic days, was considered as a causeway of life, death, and the after, after, afterlife. Exactly. As we always insist, there is a strong connection between uh, the lives of Egyptians and the Nile. Mm. Uh, it is always associated with life and death. On the, on the west, it's sunset, it's death. Because that's where the sun goes down. Exactly. Right. And on the uh, west, it's sunrise, it's life, it's happiness, it's work, it's houses, it's everything. And the link is the Nile going through from Aswan down to the whole country of Egypt. Right. You know, also something else that I picked from Yasser's story was, of course, the significance of the crocodile. I come from East Africa, where we know crocodiles to be these vicious animals that just kill but when you travel up north and you find this creature that was back in the day revered how do people feel about the crocodiles in present day egypt uh, actually we egyptians don't have like many crocodiles it would be behind the high dam right but in in the mainstream of the nile we don't have crocodiles we'll be like very few mm -hmm. and a crocodile in ancient Egypt symbolizes strength and dominance and power so that's why all the egyptians used it as a symbol of power and, and dominant. Right. And something else I picked from Yasser, he said the desert represented evil. Yeah, because it's desert, no life, it's death. There's nothing to do there. You get a picture actually by just looking at what's behind us. It's just bare land and just yeah, hills. Yeah, exactly. And one more thing to add before we move to the next feature. Right. I would like to tell people that there are lots of things to do here in Aswan. Number one thing to do is Abu Simbel temples two massive rock temples at the western bank of Lake Nasser, about 230 kilometers from Aswan. You have to do it, I promise you. You have to keep your camera rolling all the way. It should be scenic just looking at the Nile. You know, it just captures the life and activities around here. One of the most significant uh, roles the Nile plays here in Aswan is transportation of goods, of people. And for me, Mila just captures the essence of that with one very small boat that is commonly referred to as the Faluka here. <music> It's a scene that's been played out here for countless generations. The guides to this great river preparing for their working day. There are many ways of traveling up and down the Nile. One of the easiest is a felucca. It's a way of traveling that's barely changed over the years. And Adli is our captain today. You're welcome, Matthew. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You're welcome. In a world of motorized transport, Adli and first mate Abdu continue to make a living from a simple boat that uses nothing more than the power of the wind and the strength of their backs. You, I think this could be a little bit easier if I help. Can I try? You're welcome. Okay. You're welcome, Amida. So I'll go over here? Yes. Done. Right. Okay. Okay. Up. The first one. Adli, this is a bit heavy. How long have you been rowing for? <laughs> With my age, 10. 10? Since yes. you're 10 years old? With the grand grandfather. That is a long, long time. Yes. I love his job. You love it? Yes. I can see why. It's a beautiful place to be every day. Yeah, I do all day in a mile. Yeah. I love my whole life in the Nile. Mm -hmm. No, and then just in the night time I go home. 
but the felucca really comes into its own when the wind begins to blow. But wetting the sails takes a real hit for heights. And uh, Abdul, he's going to climb up the sailing. Right. So it's uh, around seven meter. So up to the middle is about seven meters, all the way to the top. How many meters is that? Yeah, he said about not all between in the middle there. Okay. Yeah, and he bit to about 15 meters or some. 15 14 meters? 15 meters he's gone up, from down about to going up there. And he yeah. manages to climb all the way? Yes, yes. He's a clown all the way and then. That's pretty amazing, just yes. how quickly he's able yes. to get up there. He must do like this. Yeah. Quick, 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 yalla, <laughs> hurry. Thankfully, these two have the skills and more they're veterans of this stretch of the river in the south around Luxor. family's been working the stretch of the river for generations. Here, in the south of Egypt, near Luxor, their main business comes from tourism. Luxor, known in ancient Egypt as Thebes, is home to some of the country's most famous sites. Among them, Luxor Temple and the Valley of the Kings. Tourist numbers are recovering after dipping during Egypt's recent troubles. So, for Adli and Abdu, it's a good time to be working the river. But their felucca, as these boats have done for millennia, still provides a taxi service for the locals. I've come to one of Luxor's many riverside communities. It's where Adli and his rivals pick up much of their business. Hundreds of families live here, some for generations. And one of them is the Abu Mursi family. They've lived in this house for 50 years. Sania and her family are completely independent in their life here on the island. Traditional custom from local communities and from a resurgent tourist business means times are good for Adli and Abdu. At the end of a busy day, life on the Nile really gets better than this. Such a basic mode of transportation, which interestingly has defied urbanization. Mohammed, how has the felucca managed to remain relevant so many years down the line? Before talking about felucca, I would like you to look at, you know, these activities down there in the river. People are actually singing and having good time here. Well, back to the felucca. Actually, we have like three types of boats here. Mm -hmm. The felucca with huge sail right. and the small uh, boat you go like this, okay, and the third one will be a, a boat with a motor. Mm -hmm. Usually a felucca is used for passengers and commodities. Mm -hmm. uh, a boats, motor boats are also used for passengers and commodities uh, and the smaller ones usually used for fishing. Uh, the Nile again is very crucial when it comes to the lives of Egyptians. They used it for transportation back from the old days of all the Egyptians till today. But how would they use it? Back in the old days, the Nile wasn't tamed, we had annual floods. Would they still use the felucca back then? Yes, exactly. Even during the flood, the water gets high. Right. So it was great opportunity for all the Egyptians, the pharaohs, to use the water for uh, transporting commodities and people down the stream of the Nile. And that is where then the temple played a significant role because I remember Yasser earlier on saying that the temple, such as the Komombo temple, people who are basically doing trading along the Nile would go there 
offer sacrifices to the gods asking for Jani masses. Exactly. And if you can see behind you, right behind you, Panina, right. there is a Nile meter. Mm -hmm. Again, Nile and life in Egypt. There is a mark in the Nile meter. If, if the water is above that mark, that means it's too much water. That means destruction, no agriculture, no life. That means less taxes on right. Egyptians. If the, if the mark is beneath, if the, the water is beneath, the mark that means less water, no agriculture, no irrigation. So that would be like the dry season. Exactly. Mm. So again, low taxes. So it's Nile playing a major, crucial part in the lives of Egyptians. But I've also noticed, Mohammed, since we came here, today has been the busiest we have seen the Nile. Lots of people in the water. Is this some kind of pastime activity here in the Aswan? Exactly. The weather is fine. This is a very, you know, good time for sailing, especially mm. with sailing boats because they rely entirely on the wind. Mm -hmm. So the wind is nice today. And if you can see, there are some guys, some young people yeah. are rafting down, right the down river. there. Yes, yes exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, have you done these activities yourself? Oh, not really. But yeah. I will tell you something. You should go sailing down the river Nile at the sunset it's magic it's something you would go back home with wonderful memories and lots of photos i will take off a look at down to the Phila temple later on in the day it's been an interesting day here in aswan mahia and we have a pretty more interesting show coming up at 1700 gmt live in aswan as we move along with the nile river mahia you don't want to miss that we shall see you then Thank you, Penina. Indeed, we do all wish we could be there. And thank you for your continued coverage. That is Mohammed and Penina in Aswan, where they have been giving us that comprehensive coverage on the world's longest river and Africa's most important river, the River Nile.